red. Give it. Bring it here. Give it to me. Here. Give it. Give it. Give it here. Red. Give it. Here. Come on. Bring it to me. Give it here. Bring it. Bring it here. Bring it. Good boy. That's a good boy. Hello, 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 hello. Yvette Sojourner here. Yvette Sojourner here. Welcome. Hey there. Happy New Year. Yes, it is the new year. We are in 2024. Let me start off by saying this as always. If you haven't already liked, subscribed, shared, commented, don't forget to do it. Don't forget to do it. You know how much I love comments. But if you don't do all of those things, how else is all of this goodness gonna be spread across the YouTubers and the interweb? This is a space and a place where luxury meets authenticity. So with all that being said, Happy New Year. <laughs> Listen, we had a phenomenal year, um, but I'm gonna focus on the end of 2023 which was very, very hard for me. And I told myself when I did this video, I would not cry. So please, you know, bear with me if I do. In October, we laid to rest Red Dog. And Okay. Oh, okay. He had late stage lung cancer and um, it was rapidly spreading. By the time we caught it, it he only had days to live. So I unfortunately had to make the decision to either give him um, pain relief or to lay him the rest. And And I decided to lay him to rest because he deserved that much. I mean, I loved him so much and he did so much for me and was there for me through so, so many things. I just could not fathom him having to endure the pain that he was enduring. So I'm gonna share a little bit about Red Dog, and um, I'm also going to share with you something I picked up to commemorate him. I knew this was not going to be an easy video. I was skeptical about doing it, but I want to share all things with you, so I opted to go ahead and just share with you. But yeah, we'll unbox this um, shortly. So let me tell you a little bit about Red Dog. I got Red in 2010, and I can't even believe it had been that long because every time I saw him, he looked like the first day I got him. I actually got him for free. They had advertised him as a pit bull, but yeah, when I saw him from the front and I noticed as he, as years went on, he was not changing or evolving or getting bigger. So he was a pit, but he was mixed. And I believe he was mixed with either Datsun or a Basset Hound. So from the front, when you see, when you would see him, he had like this big head and a lot of people would kind of like be hesitant. But then when he turned to the side, his body was like really long. <laughs> had a really long body 
I just, I just love them so much. So I have some things I want to say and share with you. When I was recreating myself, Red found me, or we found each other. I learned how to live and not simply exist because of him. If you don't know my story, you should definitely go check it out. I know it's not the best of videos, and I know at some point I will recreate or retell that story. But for now, I will say go check that out because it wasn't until Red that I took the leap and the step to pursue my doctorate after I was released. It wasn't until Red that I actually ended up meeting hubs, putting myself out in the world. I had closed myself off completely and I shut down completely after all that I had gone through. I wasn't able to, or I felt I wasn't able to trust anyone. I didn't feel that I could love anyone or love myself. And yeah, then I, I found Red and it changed so, so, so many things. And as I said, he taught me how to live, not just exist. I mean, he had to go out, I had to take him out. And just that action changed everything. I mean, I started to work out, I started to eat healthier. I started to spend more time around other people because of Red. And I know it's, he's he was just a dog, but I will say that dog changed my life. Before I get ahead of myself, I, I as I said, I applied for my doctorate when, after I had re gotten Red. And when I was rejected, I built up the confidence to appeal and I was accepted. He was there as I wrote my dissertation. As I went through one failed relationship after another, I mean devastating relationships, he was there. Before I met Hubs, he was there. When I defended my dissertation, Red was there. I'm gonna start again. <laughs> when I began traveling the world, he was there. As I evolved, he was there. As I found myself, he was there. He was a big toucher. He would always have to touch me in some way, be it laying on my slipper or laying on my foot or putting his tail on my foot. Um, he was very, very physical in that way. Whereas I am not as much, but because of him, I evolved and became a more emotional and physical being. He was always there, especially when I needed him the most. He would be right beside me, not in my face. He would just come lay next to me, put all his weight against me, and just be there. And I just love that, and I miss it. He was always pushing doors open with his nose. Like, if he wanted to get into space, he would push and push and push and push until that door opened. When we met, I had Red and Hubs had Pico. And Red taught Pico to do this. So now Pico pushes his way into doors just the same. But Red was very, very persistence. He would not back down until the door opened that he wanted to get into. And I guess that's a lesson too, right? That's a lesson for me and for all of us. Like, be persistent until that door opens. <laughs> Still. He would talk to me in huffs. So he would literally argue with me about something, but he wouldn't bark. He would huff. So I would say something like, no, Red, you can't. And he would like, oh. And it would go on forever, like forever. And I just, you know what? Thank you for letting me share this with you because in the beginning, yes, the beginning of this video was very hard, but just being able to talk about him in this way, I've done it with hubs. I've done it with some few people, few people that know me, but to be able to do it with you, it really does make me feel so light 
just happy to be able to share this moment with you. He would challenge me. When I told him not to cross the line, I mean, literally one time when we were living together in the apartment, I said, do not cross this line and I will cross the, put the line. He would nudge, slowly nudge his paw over the line. Like, <laughs> it's always, always trying to get me. I mean, he was such a good dog though, so obedient, but he had his moments where he just was like, are you serious? Are we really doing this? He would eat every and anything. Like I could not give him the rawhide sticks. One time he literally ate one that was, it had to be like this long. He swallowed it whole. That's just how he would eat. And I know it was because of his prior circumstance, the way he was eating. So I had put a lot of work in retraining him and teaching him that he would always be provided for and loved. He would always have food. He would, didn't have to, you know, swallow everything. He could take his time to eat. So around our house, there were no squeaky toys, no raw hides. So when it was time for him like, to be taken out or for him to eat or for me to give him a treat, he would go and loudly lap up water. Like, so you would know. So he was like, a, an, an alarm clock he would be like it's time and it was ridiculous <laughs> it was ridiculously loud to the point where it would drive me insane and now the house is so quiet and i just told hubs the other day like i miss i miss hearing it i miss hearing him lapping up that water he loved the sun he loved to sunbathe Wherever he can catch the sun in the house, that's where he would be for hours on end. He loved it when I cooked and he would always be in the kitchen, always be in the kitchen right next to me. I did get to a point where I would not allow him in the kitchen and I would still, you know, bring him little treats or what have you, but he would always be there watching me from a distance. He always had me in his eyesight. He loved the fall and he loved the winter, but he was always cold. So I bought him a little hoodie and um, he would we would put that on him before we would take him out. He would even also wear it in the house to keep him warm, but he loved the, the fall. He loved rolling around on the ground. He loved playing in the snow. I mean, he, he and I were similar in that way because I'm a fall baby and I love the fall. Hotter weather, not so much. And he was the same way. <laughs> We, we can tolerate it, but why if we don't have to? I mean, come on. He had the biggest case of FOMO. So if Pico, the other dog, got something or was doing something or wasn't in earshot range or eyesight range, he would kind of be like, what's happening? What's going on? What? Why is this happening without me? And it was so hilarious how much FOMO he possessed. So I knew Red Dog longer than I knew Hubs. And that did not come to me until way after the fact. I was just floored. Like he knew me longer than Hubs knew me. And it's it's just a it's just amazing to me that Red and I have cut had come so far together. I mean I have evolved. I have shedded away so many things and he was always there. And it was because of Red that I met Hubs. Let me say that again. It was because of Red that I met Hubs. I had joined a dating um, app because you know, I was in counseling and a counselor gave me a list of things. And I was like, you need to find things on this list that you haven't done before and do it. And that was one of the things that I was not doing. And so she was like, well, you can't just work on your dissertation. So I went ahead and started on this dating app. And let me tell you, it was because of Red that I had to add must like dogs because people were so afraid of him. And I just don't understand why he was the cutest little thing. But yeah, that happened. And once that happened, I just was like, no, I'm not dealing with this put that in there and sure enough that's that's when hubs responded and it, it basically took off from there <laughs> red taught me how to love when i thought as i said i was unable to love and i was unlovable 
he taught me that. He was a, such a good judge of character and he let me know people's true nature and that was just amazing. It was amazing he was able to do that. I'm good at reading people, but he was that extra notch that just was like, okay, no, you, you gotta get that, you gotta go. <laughs> It feels as though he knew me longer than I knew myself. I'm learning it's not about forgetting him, but that he's no longer here. Yet, that's just another lesson he's teaching me. So what we have done and are doing, um, we are applying, of course, a ton of self-care and grace because the grieving process varies from between the two of us, but then also Pico, our other dog. And we continue to remind ourselves of that. We also remind ourselves that the grieving process can take many forms. I allow myself to cry, as you can see. Um, I allow myself to ask questions because I had so many questions as to why this happened. Even though I was so prepared, I mean, he was older and I knew that, but for some reason, there's always something, right? That just, I allow myself to remember just, you know, as we're recording, how happy it makes me to remember those things, the, the huffing, the water lapping, all the things. When I call his name out, cause sometimes it still happens, I pause and I just acknowledge that he's not here. Acknowledge it happening and remember him in that moment. I'm intentional in remembering the things that he did for me because he did a lot for me. He may have been a dog, but he did so much for me. I also remind myself that because Red was my dog long before Pico and Hubs came along, that I can't neglect Pico in all this because it's so easy to shut down. It just is. We always continue throughout this process to check on Pico and he has been such such a great supporter. Um, he he did of course miss Red, and uh, when I was putting his little sweatshirts away, he grabbed one and took it to his bed and laid on it. So I allowed him to to keep that, and I kept the other one. It's hung in my office. If I'm having a hard day, I let them know, Hubs and me go, you know, because and I allow them to comfort me. Even though, you know, it's, it was always red that did it. So now I'm creating space for that to happen. After this happened, our essay reached out because there was an event. There was a special event. And of course, I was not in the space or place to, to attend that. But it did get me to talking to her about the potential of what I could do to commemorate red. And... I'm going to insert a picture of this light that she uh, suggested. It's a Flora St. Louis, or maybe St. Louis. I guess, I guess it depends on how you say it in the US. Crystal lamp. And that lamp actually is from Hermes. It was a company that um, Hermes acquired. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna insert a picture. It is very beautiful. My essay was amazing, as always. And she said the lamp is symbolic of light and could serve as a beautiful daily reminder of red in our home. So it would brighten up our space as well as our life as red did. The thing is it was stationary, so I would only be able to use it within the house. And so I opted to consider something that I could actually take with me and have with me because that's just what I prefer and what I like. So I ended up getting something else. We went ahead and we ordered this online and this is what I ended up getting. I ended up getting a Cartier piece. Some samples, I am not gonna open that now. The bag, because that's what comes with it. But and here it is. Look at that. 
I am going to put this on and we're gonna see how I'm gonna wear it because as you know, I always wear my two pieces. And yes, it does complete, let's see, I'm gonna take this, put this here. It does, oh, it does complete my um, collection because as you are well aware, I have the love rings, I have the uh, love bracelets, and I have love earrings. And now I have this neck, this beautiful, beautiful necklace. So let's see how this will work. So I'm gonna have to figure this out because I'm not gonna wear all three of these. That just looks a hot mess. But maybe I will readjust this one and because this one has multiple latches so I can readjust it higher and remove this one. I think that's ultimately what I'm going to do in the meantime so I'm sorry I was looking at the mirror um so yeah it right now I'm not gonna leave it this way yeah I'll probably end up removing this piece because it, there's a bracelet that goes with it and I no longer wear it so we'll see I'll play around with my three pieces and see which one I want to keep but this one for sure I will continue to wear henceforth it is a very lovely piece, right? So, we shall see. Now, we're still planning on getting that lamp. I really, really, really love the, the idea of it, how beautiful it is. I mean, yes, I will be getting one of those for my office. On a brighter note, 2023 was amazing. We finally got to go to France. I mean, since the pandemic had happened, which is great. I mean, I love the fact that we finally were able to get there. I was able to get not one, but two Birkins. I mean, how amazing is that? Plus several other bags, non-quota bags, right? Like I have a whole collection of Airmans now and it's all happened in one year, 2023. Amazing. And we're not even speaking ready to wear. Stop stop or silk scarves stop 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 you know and my whole SOGs stop it stop it you guys stop stop playing with me stop playing with me we were invited to several Hermes events that was amazing like the first one I did the video on you can watch the entire journey of me attending that event before you know packing everything all of that is in there the second event we were unfortunately unable to attend it was actually a watch event um, but you know, because of Red's passing, I had to not. That was a no. I celebrated my first year on YouTube. Hello. Yes. Have you seen my very first video until now? I had, I have evolved. I mean, what in the world? <laughs> I don't even know myself anymore. Yes, I do. I do. I do. Near the end of, um, 2023, near the end we celebrated hitting the first tier of the YouTube partnership program. So we got 3000 watch hours and 500 subscribers. So we have really, really come far. We have come so far and we are well on our way to becoming monetized. Hello, listen to me. And it's because of all of you and I, thank you for all of it i thank you for showing up i thank you for continuing to show up and i thank you for just accepting me as i am right because let's just say i'm not really a typical influencer i'm not i'm not a typical let's just say i'm i'm not that typical person you would I, I don't know i don't know but it's all because of you and i thank you and i appreciate you as for my red dog yes he has been laid to rest and um i am slowly but steadily you know remembering him and moving forward but it's still i know it's gonna take so much time but yeah so that is it uh thank you once again for listening to me babble on and thank you for holding space for me as I share this news with you. I appreciate you all. 
and I'm loving this necklace I am I cannot wait to actually you know layer it so that I can show all of you once that's done but this was so fitting I mean look at so I absolutely get this piece because it would serve as a constant touching tribute that keeps red close to my heart just as he was in life it's a piece that will not only complete my collection but also carry immense personal significance for me the idea that it's something I wouldn't typically give myself as another layer of meaning almost as if red himself is gifting it to me the necklace was the most fitting choice for me to honor our bond. Well, thanks for joining me and until um, next time. Wait, this is Red Dog. I just got back in town and I think he's doing a silent protest uh, by laying here on the floor. So I turned the camera on hoping that I can run him off. He is not moving still. Red, are you going to go somewhere? Oh, okay, you're just going to get comfortable. Okay, all right. You don't even carry the cameras on anymore. Hmm. Well, thank you for welcoming me back. <laughs> He's coming. Oh, here comes the other one. Fred, I need to close the door. Red, get your tail out. I'm going to close it. This is how he holds me hostage. Red, come on, I need you to move. Okay? Bobby. Okay? No. <laughs> What's he doing? Go see. Finally. <laughs> okay, and then this. Yep. That is love, folks. That is love.